really hope this looks okay for you guys, because this is a really important video. Hey guys, it's Riley, and welcome to Trans Tuesdays. Today's episode of Trans Education is going to be about dressing for the holidays and FTM's guide. I want to preface this video by saying that all of these are my opinion and things that have worked for me. This is in no way 100% like what you have to do or what you should do. This is just something I found useful and maybe some of you guys will. I don't know if you will or not, but it's worth a shot. Also, a lot of the kinds of clothing that I'm going to be talking about tend to be more masculine clothing, and if you are a feminine trans guy who enjoys wearing dresses and things like that, this video is not for you. I mean, you can do what you want. I don't care. This is more for a gender construct conforming trans man. Um, either way, let's get into it. Dressing for the holidays can be super important because you want to make sure you look put together and this could be for a family gathering, the Christmas dinner, New Year's, church on Christmas Eve or church on New Year's. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, just for any time around the holidays you want to look nice or any time of year. This is just, I'm making this in the holiday season. The first thing I want to talk about, which is a very, very, very important piece of garment for a trans man to have if they are have dysphoria about their chest, and that is a binder. I'm going to be straight up with you, don't bind with an ace bandage. I think I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I'm probably going to make a whole video on it about how bad binding with ace bandages is. Especially when you're trying to look nice, because ace bandages look very, very lumpy, and unless you're wearing something super, super baggy, you can kind of tell. Binders are super, super important, so you want to make sure you get a binder with the right fit. So when you're ordering a binder, you want to make sure that you measure and don't just order your t-shirt size because binders differ depending on what it is. I do not recommend buying one of those cheap Chinese binders on like Amazon or eBay just due to the fact that they kind of do the same things Ace Bandages do and they're not designed to be worn for longer periods of time or by trans men. I would highly recommend using Underworks or GC2B to find your binder. I will link those places down in the description so you can go to their store. And they have a ton of different arrays and options to choose from. It's really, really great. I am wearing an Underworks binder right now and I love it. It works so good. I also have a GC2B binder and I love them both. So if you don't want to appear to have a chest during the holidays, the binder that fits correctly is very, very important to have. The next thing I'd suggest getting is an undershirt. I usually use a plain white t-shirt like I am today with this shirt or a plain tank top. Of course you can use different colors, but if you're wearing a white shirt you kind of want to make sure that it's a light gray or a white undershirt so that way it doesn't shine through. Undershirts are really helpful because it helps you layer and add a little bit of bulk, so if you are looking to hide those feminine places like the chest or the hips, it does a really good job of adding more of a square figure. As for actual dress shirts go, you could wear a button-up shirt, like a dress button-up shirt, a casual button-up shirt, a polo, or a plain t-shirt. When you want to be a little bit more dressy for the holidays, I wouldn't suggest a graphic tee. Of course you can wear a graphic tee if you want to wear a graphic tee, but it's not something I have done, it's not something I do when I'm trying to dress up. I usually shoot for a button-up or a plain t-shirt, and I do that because I tend to wear sweaters in the holiday season. Now, a lot of people associate sweaters with being a feminine thing, but they have a lot of very masculine type sweaters out there. One of my favorite places to get sweaters is Old Navy when I'm not going to a thrift shop, because usually I get sweaters at thrift shops for really cheap prices and they're super nice. Another good place I went and found a black cardigan, button-up cardigan, it fits really nicely, it's super nice, was uh, the men's section of Forever 21. That's a fairly new section, but the sweaters are super, super nice, and I really also like my sweaters from Old Navy, like I said. Sweaters are a really great tool because you can wear them with just about any kind of shirt. V-neck sweaters are really nice when you're wearing a plain t-shirt because then you can have the little bit color of the t-shirt showing, but it's also a v-neck sweater, and whether it's a pattern or plain or not, it looks really nice. Full-on sweaters are also good too. Usually you don't have to wear an actual shirt under that, you just need an undershirt, so if it's a crew neck sweater and it goes all the way down, you're probably good to go. Cardigans are super, super nice, and you can either wear those with a plain t-shirt or a polo or a button-up shirt. I really like the way some sweaters look when you wear a collared button-up shirt because then, especially with cardigans and with crew neck sweaters, you can have the collar flipped over the collar of the sweater and it looks really, really nice and really classy. On to pants. I have had so many, so many struggles finding pants because I'm very, very short and I'm also big. So they don't make big and short sections, they have big and tall sections. Finding pants for my size is next to impossible. Even the pants I'm wearing right now are about six inches too long and I have to fold them up because they don't make them. 
as for pants go, I would suggest a nice pair of slacks or chino pants. Um, I know JCPenney sells chino, so if you're a little bit taller um, and not super wide like I am, I know those are good places because before I gained a little bit of weight, I used to go shop there and I used to buy their chinos, and their chinos are really, really nice, and they're fairly inexpensive. If you get the Arizona brand, the Levi's are super expensive. Or just a nice pair of blue jeans, so like dark blue jeans, not many rips or tears or anything like that. A style that I like, I wear it all the time, but I also think it's very classy, is to get a slim fit or skinny pair of jeans that's not too tight, so it's not crazy form-fitting, but it doesn't bring out curves that you don't want to bring out. But what it's nice about it is that they're small enough for the ankle that you can roll up. Um, I think rolling up pants looks super, super nice, especially with what I'm going to talk about next, which is shoes. I'm a Vans kind of guy. I own like 10 pairs of Vans. I absolutely love them. And they are super great casual and like semi-dressy shoes. However, when I'm trying to look extremely put together, I like to wear actual dress shoes. The pair of dress shoes that I have, I bought from Payless when I was a freshman in high school and I am now graduated. They still fit, they're still in great condition, and I really love them, and I think they were only about $15. Payless is a really, really good place for you to go and buy shoes and try on shoes because it's really inexpensive, and the shoes are just as nice as any name brand shoe. And now on to accessories. I know a lot of men and trans men like to wear watches. I don't wear watches because I just wear these bracelets all the time. Um, but I'm sure a watch would look very, very nice with whatever you're putting together. Try to make sure the watch band matches what you're wearing, and I think it would look really nice. I am also a big fan of dressy hats. I know this is going to sound bad, but I feel like fedoras, like, I know fedoras get a very bad rep, but when you get the right kind of fedora and the right kind of outfit kind of put together, it looks really nice. I mean, you're not going to wear a fedora with a t-shirt because that looks bad and that's kind of what the F-boys do and that's why fedoras have a bad rep. But when you wear it with things that complement it, I think it looks really good. Also one of my favorite accessories to ever wear ever is our ties. I like regular ties, but my favorite are bow ties. I am an idiot and I don't know how to tie a bow tie. Um, so I get the clip-on bow ties that have the thing that goes around and you clip it behind the knot. They look really nice, they're really easy to adjust. JCPenney, again, is a great place for that kind of stuff. And they're super, they, they, I mean, they're nice. And bow ties and ties are a really good way to kind of distract from this area. You'd think it would like draw in, but if you wear a regular tie, it gives a little bit of texture and it doesn't look straight flat on right here. Also, bow ties, it just adds a little more pizzazz. I really like that. As for dressing, I think that's all I have. If you wear glasses, you could spruce it up with a different frame if you can afford to buy a different frame, or if you have a different frame. Um, I wear earrings, so times I wear, instead of like spiky pink studs like I have in now, I'll just wear like black studs or something like that and make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more classy, a little bit more dressy and it turns out to look really nice. Again, I wanted to say that these are all my opinions and the things that I have done in the past. If it helps you, great. If you don't want to do any of this, you don't have to. You do not have to listen to me. You do what you want to do completely, 100%. I think that's all I have for you in this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to some of you. If not, that's okay. If you guys want me to cover other stuff like this for different holidays or different things, please make sure to leave a comment down below and tell me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up because I really love making these videos and thumbing up this video will let me know that you've, I've helped you and that's a really cool feeling on my part. I'm going to be posting videos in this trans education series every Tuesday on my channel and a regular main channel video every Thursday. So that's two videos a week. So if you subscribe, that would be so cool. You get two videos a week from me on this channel and that would be crazy awesome. I also wanted to add in that my gift keyboard giveaway is still going on. I just reached 150 subscribers. How crazy is that? I absolutely love it. Thank you all so, so much. And that means that the second winner for the gift keyboard giveaway is here. Congratulations to my friend Jeremy, aka Lord Betty, on YouTube. He has won the medium-sized t-shirt. So now both of the t-shirts are gone, but there's still loads of cool stuff that I have to give to you guys, like stickers and water bottles and sunglasses. So be sure to head over to the video, best iPhone app ever, follow the instructions in the video and the instructions in the description and you'll figure out how to enter, and it'll be really cool. You should definitely enter. I still have a lot of cool stuff to give away to you, and I think Give Keyboard would really appreciate it because the guys over at Rissy are really awesome, and they'll appreciate it, and you repping their stuff, they'll really appreciate it, and frankly, their merch is pretty great.
The next winner for that contest will be announced when I reach 175 subscribers. So I'm 25 away from that right now. So go get your friends to subscribe to my channel and maybe you'll be the next winner. Who knows? Either way, we'll figure it out soon. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. That's all I have for you today and I will definitely see you on Thursday. Bye!